Welcome to Veteran Voice. My name is Larry McCullough. I'll be your host again today. We've got a couple of special guests on today that are going to talk to us a little bit about something that's coming up next month, which is the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, the Veterans Day Parade has been going on for some time, and I've got a couple of people from the Veterans Day Parade Committee that work, uh, work with the city to put the parade on. Uh, on the left here is Cindy Bird. Cindy, Hello. good to have you on the show. I know. I understand you represent the DAR and yes. uh, you all have your own little contest uh, that is done during Veterans Day and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Right. And on the right here is a good friend of mine, Mr. Ted Pace. He's a uh, quartermaster over at the Veterans of Foreign Wars, past commander, past about everything. He's done it all, I believe, but uh, he is now the chairman of the Veterans Day Parade and Ted's going to talk to us a little bit about what's, what's going to be going on on November the 11th. Ted, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Larry. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you all showing up today. Why do, Ted, why don't you go ahead and start a little bit and uh, give us a little bit of background on, on the parade. I know we were, I cannot remember exactly how many years it's been going. We think it's either 12 or 14. Okay, well, it's my understanding that it's been about 14 years now. I know it was, uh, bega it began when Mayor Albert Jones was in office, and there had been one several years before, but for some reason they took a break and didn't do it for a few years and then we picked it back up. And um, for the last 14 years it's been been uh, pretty much the same and the uh, city sponsors it and it's done through the uh, Paducah Parks and Recreation Department. And these folks offer us a great deal of support. We do have a, a Veterans Day Parade Committee and Cindy and I are both on it and, and some seven or eight other members. and. We serve in an advisory capacity, if you will, and we kind of tweak the actions and we make recommendations. But these folks from the uh, Parks Department are the people who actually do the legwork and get the job done. They coordinate it with all the uh, various agencies of the city. They do a good job and basically we just take it every year and what didn't work last year, we try to improve that and what did work, we leave it alone. So it goes very well and we're, we're very proud to be a part of it. So how often do you all have your meetings? Uh once a month or ever. I know that obviously you're probably not having meetings in February or anything to uh, might be starting a little early but uh, actually we we have meetings only in like the three months previous to the to the Veterans Day and then we have one a month um, so actually we have about three meetings actually before the parade and if there's something comes up we all call a special meeting if, if we need to. Okay, have, uh, have you got any idea how many entries you've got so far? I know that we're still a ways away well, from it. Well, it's it was a little bit disappointing. The last uh, information I had is that we had uh, 21 entries in, in the form of floats. We had um, uh, one one band's going to be there, and we have four schools that are scheduled to attend with, with the children sitting on the sidelines. And I'm, I'm hoping there'll still be some more entries. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's still a little ways off, so it is. We, we can hope for that. Well, Cindy, tell us a little bit about uh, the DAR's involvement. I, I know you're on the committee, and, and but you all have your own special project that you do around Veterans Day. Would you like to explain that to us? Well, it's not really our project. We just assist with it because we're very much interested in education and patriotism. The Daughters of the American Revolution have those two things as, as one of at the as uh, they're part of their goals, education and patriotism. So they want to assist with the essay contest. Um, it is the city's uh, uh, contest. We just uh, support it and I help see. with it. Well, I know that in the past you've had a lot of entries. Um, yes. I think a couple of years or two ago you had two or three hundred, I we think. We had 400 at oh. one time. Oh. One, one year we had 400. We right. usually have around 200. Oh. And that must be tough making a decision. Do you get a yes. lot of the ladies around and they read them and yes. it just kind of narrow it down as you go? Yes, we do our best to make it uh, objective. We don't, um, we don't look at names. The names are supposed to be on the back so the ladies don't know who they're judging. They just look and read and read and read <laughs> and, and we do it by the categories because the different age groups have the uh, a uh, uh, first second and third in the different age groups okay and, so. and they get uh, awards and prizes for, yes, the, for the the city gives them a bond for the first place and a book for third place 
and I think it's a, I think it's a hundred dollar bond for the first and fifty dollar bond for the second place, and then a, a really nice book for the third place. And then the DAR likes to give the first place winner uh, a special flag set as well. Oh, that's that's good. Mm -hmm. and now, how's it gone this year? Have you got, have you got a lot of input? Is it a lot of entries or? Well, no, not it, not so far, and we don't have that uh, many at this point to look at. But we will be, I'm sure, getting them in in the next week or so. It's it's probably a lot like the float situation you're talking about. There's a lot that will wait till the last minute, and yes. with uh, you know with with Halloween coming up and just getting done with Memorial Day and and everything, we're getting into that time of year where everybody has this tendency to procrastinate, and I'm the world's right. worst. I, I admit it. But uh, hopefully you'll get some more in. And, uh, yes, we expect you, to. Did you bring any today, or yes, or I have several. Okay. I, I thought you would find them very interesting, especially because of the uh, topic this year. The topic for the the parade is veterans, heroes among us, and of course the little kids draw pictures, kindergarten yeah. through second grade. This one is um, supposed to be General Patton. So I, I suppose that's the hero for this child. The little ones were supposed to do Veterans Are Brave because we didn't know if they would understand the hero concept. But the uh, older ones got the hero concept very well. And I've, I'd like to read a few comments from them if you don't mind. Sure, sure, go ahead. You, you might find this very interesting. These are ninth graders that, okay. that wrote these. And I'm just gonna read little portions out of them. And one of them is just really good and you'll understand that. Um, it, this one says, veterans fought for the things so many of us take for granted every day. In the United States, we can make our own choices and decisions about our lives, but we would have never had that freedom without our veterans. There are certain things such as jury duty and paying taxes, which all citizens are required to do. They are not difficult things, however Americans complain about having to do them. Veterans choose on their own to fight for their country and take pride in doing it. So that, that's just one. That's, at uh, what grade? What this grade is ninth level? grade. Ninth grade. Okay. These, are, these are all ninth grades all okay. that, that I'm going to read. So they're, because they, they understand the topic, heroes among us, very mm -hmm. well. And you'll see that as I go along. This next one says, it is one thing to be willing to die for our country. However, it is an even greater thing to be willing to die for the sake of a different country. This requires a, peop uh, a love of people. I suspect that this requires an even greater strength. However, most of us simply forget. Perhaps you have noticed that veterans receive appreciation with astonish astonishing modesty. This is the type of character that leads me to respect them even more. The problem is that this behavior makes recognizing and thanking a veteran a person in person particularly difficult. So, and then he gives you some suggestions of how to thank a person. But this is the very, the best one. Um, we hope that, that students will take these topics and learn to respect and honor veterans more by having written these. This one helps you understand that maybe they should look beyond what we see. Maybe people think veterans are old people or they're disabled people. And um, it might, this causes you to think differently. This student says, they're around you all the time, passing you day by day. They don't, they don't know you and you don't know them, yet they've risked risk everything for you. Do you know who these people are? They are the veterans of the United States of America. When I think of a veteran, I think of someone who is courageous, outgoing, and unafraid. I think of almost a superhero character, when actually they can be your everyday people. They are the people who ba pass by constantly and care for us but don't even know us. They fought for us in wars so that we could live our lives in peace and happiness. They are your average people, which happen to have an immense heart. I, don't, I hope the next time you come across an American soldier, you will show your respect for them and the fallen with a simple gesture. Yeah, that is very good. Very good, yeah. And I, can, I know that I have that 
sometimes when somebody will come up and thank me for serving, and I, I'm, I don't, it doesn't seem like the right thing to do at the time. It's yes. kind of hard to think, you know, I mean, normally it's best just to say, well, you're welcome or something mm -hmm. like that. It's, it does kind of make some awkward, uh, veterans awkward, because we, you know, none of us did it for any kind of glory or anything. We did it, we went into it to, for our country, but once we got in there, it was pretty much the guys that you were around, that you were fighting with and for. Mm -hmm. And uh, but y'all went in for the same reason. It's that common bond that I always talk about. But but it, just think this says vet, veterans, heroes among us. Do you if you two who are veterans went into a school, would anyone know you were a veteran? No, I not, you don't wear a badge. No, so no. finding these people is sometimes hard for the I, I students. Went, but went they need schools, to look. I went into schools for many years, talking, uh, working on copy machines and such when I was working, and. Uh, they found out at Heath because uh, Shelley Street, who now works with Paducah Sun, was uh, uh, on the school paper out there. And she did a little story one time about the guy who's got all the black stuff on his hands when he comes out of the office is also a veteran because copy machines have a tendency to get nasty. Now, Ted, you've had some involvement with uh, with some of the schools where your daughters, uh, your one of your daughters, work uh, teaches. I mean, uh, Farley Elementary, yes. And uh, you've, you've gone out there. In fact, you've got some other stuff coming up where you've, you're going to be out there too. Uh, we, we are, well, let, let me back up a little bit. The state of Kentucky uh, had previously, in years gone by, they had mandated that a, a uh, period of instruction be taught to high school students uh, within a day to five days before Veterans Day. Now they've expanded it to, to uh, include all students. And so my daughter teaches at Farley Elementary. Uh, she teaches third grade. And um, uh, she asked me if I would come out there and, and do a presentation. And uh, we're going to, I don't know the exact date now. And again, the mandate is uh, one to five days before Veterans Days. So we'll break it down into two groups. We'll have a kindergarten through second grade, and then we'll have a third through fifth grade. And we'll gear it toward these people. And she and I together will we'll do a presentation and um, hopefully uh, give the children some understanding of what Veteran Day is all about. Yeah, I, and I think that's good. It's a good idea. They they need to understand, and as is obvious in the uh, the writings of the ninth grader, they've got pretty good vocabulary there. A couple of those words I'd have had to look up how to spell, I'll be honest with you. But, well, but they're on uh, a computer, so they probably did. Ah, that, that always helps the, the spell, modern spell tech. Spell check is wonderful. Spell check is wonderful, yes, isn't it? Yes. If I could just turn out and turn, right. figure out how to turn mine on, I'd be in better <laughs> shape. Ted, tell us a little more about the parade. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we'll get more people involved and more more uh, entries as the time goes by. But, well, uh, I think I think we certainly will. You know, there's uh, you and I are active in a number of uh, fraternal organizations, veterans fraternal organization, and invariably there's the guy that said, "Well, I thought somebody took care of it. And I thought somebody took care of it. In the end, nobody took care of it." And and so we'll have some last minute entries, and then we'll have some that simply show up and nobody turned in the paperwork. So uh, I said 21 or 22, but I really expect considerably more than that. And uh, uh, it will happen. It will be better. And, and I hope certainly there'll be more than one band involved. I, I, that, would, that would surprise me yeah. if, we, if we don't hear from the others, yeah. because I know in years past that's been a big, a big part of the parade. I mean, that's what people expect in a parade is to hear the bands. And, and the students, the high school bands, always do an outstanding job. Well, you know, I know the uh, school, again, Farley Elementary, they're going to bring uh, 550 students to, to uh, uh, set along two city blocks. And, you know, it's a, it's a logistic uh, undertaking to transport that many students, and particularly with the economy that we've got now, uh, just to haul 550 students, uh, it's only it's a, maybe three or four miles, but it's a lot of dollars involved, gas, gas-wise and paying the personnel to drive the buses and on and on and on. And so the economy could certainly be having an impact on, on the number of entries we don't have. It seems like the, the economy is affecting a lot of things right now. It's uh, Wall Street on its uh, had, has a roller coaster ride and yeah. a lot of people are, are, are very pessimistic and, and it's, it's hard not to be that way, but uh, hopefully it won't affect some of the things like this. This is, uh, you know, Veterans Day is our day as you and I like to like to say and we always you know we're always glad to see the students out there because they got a lot of flags uh, did y'all get flags to pass out to the children this year or are the schools the, taking the, care uh, of that? the parks department has uh, has gotten 3,000 flags to pass out My goodness. And, uh, they personally deliver them to the schools that request them 
and I have already put an order for 550 for Farley and and that you know to Pat Earl so I'll know it'll be I know it'll be taken care of yes and um, yeah that's very generous to the city I mean, those things are maybe 30 35 cents a piece but when you multiply that time 3,000 you get into get into a few dollars yes oh yes and so it's a very generous thing for the city to do and we do appreciate it well like you say parks and recreation from the beginning has always done a, a wonderful job of uh, Yes. I, you yeah. know, I was on the committee at one time, and, and the veterans that are on the committee come up with, with certain ideas, and it's like you said, what works with you, you keep doing, and what needs tweaked, then you, you, you try to find out a good way to do it. And uh, I presume that most of the things are going to be pretty much the same this year as they, as, uh, as they have been in the past, with a few little exceptions. Uh, actually, I can't think of any particular exceptions. Uh, or, uh, you know, retired Navy Lieutenant Commander uh, Don Taylor, who is the uh, head of the uh, Junior Naval ROTC Department over at Tillman, he's going to serve as the Master of Ceremonies at the program oh, down good. at the gazebo prior to the um, uh, parade itself. And so there's always that change. And then we always have the uh, situation of getting a color guard together and particularly getting one that will walk slow enough that we can keep up with it. <laughs> but uh, other than that, no, it, it will be basically the same as always. And uh, the Parks Department encourages people to uh, have uh, has candy to hand out that they actually walk along and, and hand it to the children rather than throwing it to them. And uh, I've, uh, all 14 years I've walked the entire parade and it's getting a little harder every year, I might add. Uh, I, I can but imagine. Nevertheless, I do it. But I have a tendency to walk along and, and uh, hand out candy to the to the smaller kids, the ones that are being overrun by the more, more <laughs> aggressive, larger kids. So you do that, you, you walk over to, uh, to some kid you see sitting under a tree over there, and then you look up and your float's half a block ahead, you know, and then, you, then you're jogging to try to get called up. So, so it's, you, kind of, you it's get, interesting. You get a good workout that you, day, You do you? indeed, yes. Now, the route is from 2nd uh, Street to... 17th, I believe. 17th Street, mm -hmm. and it, it leaves from 2nd Street. And leaves from 2nd Street. I, mm -hmm. just, I don't even know if I mentioned it a while ago. That I just assume everybody knows when Veterans Day is and what the uh, the story is by that. It's, uh, I mean, it, as you and I know, if, in fact, if you want to go ahead and expound on that a little bit if you'd like to. Well, there's two things I always like to point out, that there are two major veterans holidays a year, and one is Memorial Day, and it is always the last Monday um, excuse me, the last Monday in May. Memorial Day is, is, is designed to honor those who have actually lost or given their lives in, in for the service of our country. Uh, Veterans Day, on the other hand, is always on November the 11th, and it's simply designed to honor and recognize all veterans, those who served in uh, wartime or peacetime, but it is, in fact, always on November the 11th, and uh, traditionally it always starts at 11 o'clock because that's when the Armistice was assigned in uh, uh, 1918, uh, uh, ending World War I. Uh, it, it was signed at 11 o'clock on the 11th, and the, on the 11th month. So, kind of keeps it pretty simple to remember 11, 11, 11. Well, so, I know most of the, most veterans yeah. know exactly when it is. Yeah, and indeed. And uh, I, I, every year I have to get in my complaint about the facts that the kids do not get out of school on federal on, on a, a Veterans Day, which is in fact a recognized federal holiday, Yeah. but there are other days they do. On the other hand, they might not uh, show up in the collective groups if they weren't, uh, you know, sent on a field trip as such, so yeah, it has some good, good that's, points. That's one points. of those double-bladed yeah, things that is. you really, really don't really know where yeah. to go. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it is, I know I, I usually do the, the show for uh, uh, channel 2 here, Sam Burridge and I normally do the mm -hmm. uh, the commentary because that is carried live on Channel 2. And I get to see the parade really well, but I, I hear later on when we go to the different different veteran service organizations to kind of celebrate the day, uh, I hear stories about uh, guys that get a little lump in their throat when they're between 2nd Street and say 4th or 5th Street with all the, yeah. all the children there and they're all waving flags and saying thank you. and. I know some pretty guys, strong, uh, pretty strong guys that have a tendency to well up just sure. a little bit, you sure, know. Sure. And, and, it, and it's nice. I, it's nice. I think, uh, and it's only fair that we honor veterans once a year. I mean, it, it should be honored more often. Uh, but uh, at least that's our day. I've always thought it was terrible. I had to take a day of vacation because most uh, 
most businesses don't allow Veterans Day as a, as a legal holiday, and I'd use day of vacation to get uh, get away for that, but I've always enjoyed doing it. Well, we just, uh, in the last few days, we had a legal holiday, Columbus Day, okay? Now, how many people do you actually think went out and celebrated <laughs> Columbus as such? <laughs> And, and yet, Veterans Day is not a uh, recognized holiday. Yeah, it's, just, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, well. it's ironic that on, on yeah. Veterans Day, if a veteran tries to call the VA, there's nobody there. Right. <laughs> so. you'll, you'll probably get the little machine, but you won't talk to a human being. So, you know, the thing is about parades is we have, uh, we have three major parades a year in Paducah. We have the Labor Day Parade, the Veterans Day Parade, and the Christmas Parade, of course. And for the last 14 years, I have walked in all three of them each year, so that I've walked in some 42 parades, if you will. And I enjoy it, but the problem is you never get to see them when you walk in them. And, and so uh, one of these days, I'm just going to sit in the curb and watch it go back. <laughs> well, you can watch it on television later. Well, you can, but it's, and we usually do, but it's just not quite the same. Oh, you know? no. Oh, no. You can, because you're, you're seeing what the camera sees, and you're not seeing all the people around mm -hmm. you and, and what they're doing. and, and uh, that you got a point there that I never thought about. You know, yeah. you always, uh, the VFW always does have a, a float in all of the major parades, and uh, we've got a lot of good volunteers, and you being one of them, and it always helps take care of the arrangements of who's going to pull the float and, you know, get the candy, get the flags, get whatever needs to be done. And uh, as it, like we said, we've got a lot of good volunteers that, that pitch in and help. Now, um, I know that normally they have a, uh, a patriotic, patriotic, patriotic musical program that evening that uh, in the past I think has been held at, uh, oh, somebody help me here. Heartland. 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 That's it, that's mm -hmm. it. Is it Heartland this year? Is that, is that gonna be coming off? It, Cindy, do you know, have you talked to I George was, about that? Yes, he has talked to us, the committee, and it is it is scheduled. But, okay. but it's not going to be on Veterans Day itself. It's going to be on uh, the 15th. I believe okay, so Saturday the, night. The, uh, the following Saturday after yeah. Veterans no, Day. I think it's the eleventh this year. I'm sorry. I think it's the eleventh this year. It was fifteenth last year. That's not the. Oh, okay. That's not what I'm George sorry. told me. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. So well, perhaps we don't know the exact. Okay, well, I'm so sure that'll yeah. that'll be in the paper, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about that on the uh, during the parade also mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. when that's going to be going on. And as I understand, that usually I've been out there a couple of times. It's always a good uh, a good musical program. It's a great program, and uh, great and, program. A, and a and a very good turnout every mm -hmm. year. It seems to get better and better. Of course, you know George Bogors uh, gets it together, and and, and like most people, uh, if you get something together, you tend to do what you like. George likes the big band music from World War II, and uh, and uh, that's basically what the program's composed of. But it's a very entertaining and, and a very nice evening, and I'm personally. Uh, saddened that more veterans do not come out and attend it. Yeah, I understand what mm -hmm. you mean. Uh, it's, I think by that time of the day, a lot of people are getting getting worn down and tired. And in any event, the exact date will be, be in the papers. So. Okay, good. And um, we're getting down about the last five minutes or so. There's, and I, there's always something that we forget to talk about inevitably when I'm doing this show. Cindy, is there anything you'd like to say before we run out of time? Just anything at all other than encouraging the, the children to to get involved and thank veterans and, and come out to the parade? And, and that's pretty much what the essay does. It, it makes them think about it so that they may learn to do so in the future. And uh, they will, of course, be at the, we will call the winners, and they'll get to be at the gazebo to read the first place essays and receive their awards. That's great. So the, so the actual ceremonies are going to start about 10.30 that morning? About 10.30. Down at, uh, mm -hmm. at the gazebo? Yes. And uh, normally I know that they've got coffee and donuts down there, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we encourage the veterans. The only thing that's usually up in the air when Veterans Day comes is the weather. And I can remember doing it in the on some very, very nice days and on some very, very nasty days. But uh, normally it, we plan to go. Most veterans feel like they've been wet before. They've been rained on and fought through, always been in a lot worse shape than this. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we will have a good turnout of veterans and uh, and people on the side so that they can just take a take a little bit of time that day to, to call a veteran or, or especially come to the parade and show their patriotism, which I think is going real strong right now with uh, uh, absolutely. the situation. I know that a lot of people are getting frustrated with the length of, uh, of the war that we're in in the Middle East right now. And I can understand their frustration, but uh, the young men and women, as a matter of fact, uh, we're going to be having a party soon for 
fellow who's coming back at uh, right. there at the VFW, and and uh, we we always try. I think everyone should make sure they thank these men and women they, when they come home. They're living under some very dangerous and very awkward situations, uh, and some of them on their third and fourth tours. Mm -hmm. And uh, th these are guys that need to be honored too. I mean, even though they're still on active duty. They're a veteran of a war, sure and, they, they, and they they need to uh, they need to the people need to Be appreciate recognized. that. Yes, and um, that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure I brought up today is that I know that there's a lot of Iraqi and Afghanistan veterans out there. I know there's a lot of Desert Storm veterans out there that uh, may or may not come to the parade, and for for whatever reason they might have, I would really encourage them. You know, this is the one day of the year that we get recognition. It's like you said, well, the, the, the letter said a while ago, a lot of guys, they're just like, gosh, don't worry about it. And, mm -hmm. and don't quite know how to accept the thank you that the public's trying to give them. And uh, so I would encourage any of the guys that are between tours or uh, are even are still on active duty, if they'd come on out and join us in the parade, we'd love to have them. Uh, you know, we'd love to appreciate them. Well, we, you know, I, I, I'm glad that the, that the parade has continued to go all this time, and I suppose as long as there's a decent turnout of veterans and of, uh, of uh, spectators, that it will continue. I think it probably will, and uh, I'd like to uh, say one final thing. Uh, I assume this show is going to be shown several times between now and Veterans Day, mm -hmm. and so anyone out there who would like to uh, have an entry, well, please, please uh, call the Parks and uh, Recreation Department there. There's still plenty of time to get your entry in, and uh, right. we'll, we'll certainly make room for you. We'll, we'll make it as long as it needs to be. The yeah. longer, the better. Sometimes you just got to kind of adjust things at the end, but uh, I know and that we get good that, at doing that. that. Oh, yes, yes. The, uh, plus the, the ambassadors for the city with their red jackets are always down there helping direct people on where they're supposed to be, and mm -hmm. most times it comes off real, real good. So, uh, Cindy, I want to thank you for coming out and and all the hard work that you ladies do to, to read through all those and then try to get them all narrowed down to, it's gotta be a monumental task. We enjoy it. But uh, we appreciate your participation in doing it. Ted, uh, congratulations on another year as, as uh, the chairman of the committee. I think you're, you're doing a fine job. Thank you. I think things are gonna work out real well. And uh, I know I'm looking forward to the parade. I'm gonna pray for good weather and we'll hope that my prayers are heard and. Whatever happens, we're still going to have a parade, and then we're, as I like to say to, to all the guys, boys, this is our day. Let's have a little bit of fun. So it'll be great, whatever it is. Yeah, there you go. So thank both of you for coming on the program today. I appreciate it. If you're seeing this, please come out and watch the parade. And if you're a veteran or if you're on active duty, please come out and participate in the parade. We'll find a float or something to put you on a unicycle, bicycle. We'll find some way to get you in that parade. But I want to thank you all for tuning in today. Don't forget about Veterans Day, and we'll see you next time on Veteran Voice.